Namaste, hello all. My name is Deepthi Sundarajan. Welcome to the Oz Moms Diaries. Today, I welcome you to the third episode. No matter how many pictures you've seen, nothing can come close to actually being there. I'm talking about the Aloha State, Hawaii. Many of us would have been there as tourists, but today we're going to meet an island mama who was born and raised there, Alexis Whaley. Alexis was born and raised in an island called Oahu and she is an enthusiastic mama who likes to live a holistic lifestyle. She lives there with her two adorable sons, Makoa and Kai. Let's talk to Alexis and find out more about her life journey, her island upbringing, about how to live a holistic lifestyle and a thing or two about essential oils. Hi Alexis. Hi Deepti. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. It's so nice to see you again. Very nice to see you as well. You look great. So do you as always. I love seeing all your photos on Instagram of your family. It's just so, brings me so much joy. Thank you and likewise. Thank you. So Alexis, I can't wait to hear about your life in Hawaii and uh, tell us about how was your childhood and your upbringing in an island. Oh my goodness. I, first of all, I just have to say I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed. Uh, Hawaii truly is one of the places of paradise in the world. Um, not only is it beautiful physically, but the people here are just so welcoming and warm. And like you said, the Aloha spirit is definitely alive and well here. Um, and people just really appreciate and respect each other. So growing up, I spent most of my time playing outside. Um, it's warm year round here. So I was just really lucky in that regard um, to just be playing outside all the time and having so much fun. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. So did, were you really adventurous as a child? Did you do like climbing trees and things like that? Yes, yes I was. I was definitely a tomboy. Um, I had a, or I have a brother, he's a year younger than me, mm -hmm. and our next door neighbor was also a boy. So I played with boys, I was a tomboy, I loved climbing trees, running around barefoot, I would get cuts and bruises all the time, scraped. <laughs> but I, you know, I did have some, some dolls and Barbies here and there, but mostly I really liked just playing outside and just being a wild child. <laughs> so nice. So uh, Hawaii is a, you know, I can call it a cultural melting pot. There is music, dancing, food, so much culture and, uh, you know, the aloha spirit, people embody it and in whatever they do. Um, is it just the touristy side of it or how is it living there actually? That's a really good question and I think it goes for a lot of travel destinations as well. You kind of wonder, okay, well, I see all the pictures and the things on TV, but how do the people who live there actually live? So that's a really great question. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of touristy things that us locals like to do as well. Okay. Um, I, we love to eat Hawaiian food. Mm -hmm. It's more of a treat. It's more expensive here because it is something that people have to make locally. Um, okay. So, but we definitely love that. Uh, I know of local people who have gone to the luau's just for fun. <laughs> um, I've been to the cultural center here many times just to see and learn uh, things about different Polynesian cultures. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely go and see all the sightseeing things. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is definitely, you know, some different aspects. You know, we do have normal life where we have mm -hmm. to go to work and pay bills, do chores, you know, right. all the stuff that people have to do. But we are very lucky in that we do have the rest of Hawaii to enjoy as well, just like the tourists. Wonderful. And um, so did uh, you did move out of Hawaii for a brief amount of time, right? So how yes. is your life uh, away from the island? And are you like waiting to go back or how is it? I, I loved it. So I did move to Washington. I only lived there for a year and a half. So it wasn't actually as long as I would have liked. I love Washington State. It is so wonderful. It's beautiful. 
The people there are so kind. It's actually very diverse, at least where I was in the Seattle-ish area. Very mm -hmm. diverse. Um, mm -hmm. So I really appreciated that. So mm -hmm. much to do. Um, and I did miss home. I'm used to the warm weather and the yeah. sunny skies. <laughs> but it's always raining here. I know. I, it was hard for me. That part was hard. But I do have to say, uh, Washington is absolutely gorgeous. There's a lot of things that you have that we don't have here in Hawaii that I actually miss a lot. So I would have liked to spend more time there. A year and a half was not enough, but I do hope to go back and visit sometime soon, maybe once my kids are a little older. Oh yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah. And I'll get to meet you if you do that. I will definitely let you know if I come. We'll meet up. Sure. <laughs> And I see from your, uh, you know, Instagram posts and as much as we have spoken that you like to live a holistic lifestyle. Um, so what do you uh, mean by holistic lifestyle and what aspects do you follow that? So I just want to first start off by saying I am by no means perfect. Um, I still eat junk food. I, I still have certain products in my home that I'm sure are not totally clean. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely not perfect. I am a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've just been trying to pay a little bit more attention, especially since becoming a mom to the kinds of things that we're using, um, not only eating and ingesting, but also what we're putting on our skin, mm -hmm. using to clean our home. Mm -hmm. Um, even the products that we're buying, like furniture and things like that, what's in them. Mm -hmm. Um, and so just also realizing that everything that we do affects our well-being physically and mentally and spiritually so just be trying my best to become more aware and do better in that regard uh, mm -hmm. again i'm not perfect it's a work in progress it's such a great challenge it's really fun mm -hmm. and i know that there will be great long-term benefits as well right and it's such a great step and it's much needed uh, in today's you know day and age where yeah. we're surrounded by toxic things chemical things you know and so we as an audience uh, people who are watching uh, can you suggest if there are any resources where do you go to uh, to learn how to uh, you know what contains uh, what are the things that contain the toxic uh, chemicals and how do we avoid them and what are the substitutes for those so of course it's it's there's a lot of information out there um a lot of the research i do is just on google you know typing in different things typing in different questions um and another really good thing to do is just to start paying attention to what ingredients are in certain products like your shampoos conditioners toothpaste mm -hmm. you're gonna see a lot of the same product uh, ingredients repeated mm -hmm. so if you happen to see that just do a quick Google search, educate yourself on what that is and what it could potentially do to you, if anything. I'm not saying that all ingredients are bad, um, but it, it does take time to do the research. Um, there isn't really one specific source that I would point to for everything. Okay. Um, you're going to have to pull from here and there. There's a couple of apps that are really good, like the Think 30 app, um, mm -hmm. Healthy Living app that mm -hmm. can give you a great starting point that you can okay. do your research from there. Okay, nice. So uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you was you have started a project uh, with a fellow mom called Palm and Pine Tribe. Can you yes. talk to us about that? Sure, so Palm and Pine Tribe is just our name for our little, uh, you know, our little group, our little business. Um, it's part of Young Living. So what Young Living is, it's an American company that produces essential oils. Essential oils, if people don't know what they are, they're basically like highly potent plant extracts. Mm -hmm. um, and Young Living, their process for doing it, they take control from A to Z. Mm -hmm. um, their qualities are top notch. They know exactly what happens at what time. They mm -hmm. can answer all your questions. And so what those essential oils are able to do, they're 100% pure. Um, even more than organic and top-notch uh, what they do is they are able to help support you in different ways in your life mm -hmm. um, whether it be physically emotionally or spiritually mentally um, different products work differently for different people so I will add that as well 
Um, but yeah, so that that's our just our little group that we've kind of put together to create a community of like minded people that are interested in more holistic, all natural living. That's nice. So um, how did you uh, come about uh, with essential oils? You know, like, was it uh, an extension of your, uh, you know, the process of getting rid of toxic, you know, did you chance upon essential oils through that or? Yeah, so um, I will also add, there's a lot of other great brands out there that are a lot cleaner than some of the big brands. I won't, I don't want to say names as far as yeah, we don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah we right. do that. But um, to mention a few brands that are good that I know of, um, seventh generation is really great. Uh, the honest company does a really good job as far as baby products and things like that. Yeah. Um, so there are things available in stores as well. Um, so that's, that's definitely something to look to look forward to. Um, but what I would also like to say is essential oils are kind of a, an extension of that. They're kind of like a basis that you can use um, to switch towards more all natural alternatives okay. um, aside from products that you can buy in the store as well. Great. Okay. So moving on to the second part of our interview, uh, your motherhood journey. So tell us about your, uh, you know, adorable family. Thank you. Yeah, so I uh, I have two boys. Mm -hmm. um, Makoa is my older son. He's He just made three. Mm -hmm. And Kai is my younger son. He's about to turn one in a little less than two weeks. So wow. I will have a three-year-old. So um, that's really exciting. Uh, my husband and I have been married for three years. We got pregnant with Makoa right after. Okay. <laughs> That was a surprise, but no, motherhood has just been ugh, everything. I mean, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the yep. biggest blessing, but also the hardest thing. Yep. It's the frustrating thing, but the most joyous thing. It's everything rolled up into one. And I know you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm just so lucky. I love being a mother. I'm not the perfect mom and I'm not just happy Mary Poppins all the time, but right. I'm doing my best like the rest of us. <laughs> right. We all have our moments of imperfect moments. Oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So uh, I see a lot of your posts on Instagram where you know you guys are hanging out in the sun, you're playing on the beach, you're outside. So I assume that, uh, you know, your kids don't get so much screen time. Uh, is that true? Or how do you balance that with outside time? So that's a really good question. Um, and I, one thing I want to say first off is my kids do get screen time. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely right. do. Um, right. They sometimes get a little bit more than I would like. Okay. Um, but one thing I do also want to touch upon really quickly because you mentioned Instagram is... Uh, just, I guess, something that we need to remember is every the things that we see on Instagram are not always, of course, all that there is. Um, yeah. So I do mostly post pictures of us outside, and we do yeah. we are outside and at the beach a lot. Okay. But equal time, we're at home inside uh -huh. that. <laughs> <laughs> right. With boys or watching Disney Plus or something like that. So <laughs> right. I, I, I do believe in balance. Um, there's definitely, it's not possible for me to take them outside on adventures every day. Yeah. I of course. Yeah. <laughs> so That's I, tr I do try to get out as much as possible, but I do believe in balance. It's all about balance. You can have too much of one thing. So yeah, yeah. they need to have a little bit of everything, right? So you need your days of rest at home as well. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Great. And uh, how about uh, a community support? Like, I believe that uh, we as moms, we need like maybe a group of moms, a group of friends or whatever to support us in our parenting journey. So do you have something like that over there? I I do and I don't. Um, it's, it's a little bit of both. I have a lot of friends on social media or, you know, 
friends that I'm not with physically, um, but we do keep in contact, like you and me. Um, yeah. Friends that I can still talk to for support and just to relate to, um, even just to see other people's posts about their families, and it reminds me that I'm not going through something alone. Right. Um, but I, of course, I do have some local friends here who are mothers who, okay. you know, it, it's definitely helpful to, to have yeah. around to support each other. It's, it's so vital, I think, just to remember that we're not alone in motherhood. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, how did this uh, pandemic time affect you all in Hawaii? And how did you, did you get anxious? Uh, were you stressed? How did you handle that? Uh, so I'm normally a very go with the flow, happy go lucky, positive, optimistic person. Mm -hmm. But I will admit that uh, this pandemic definitely made me nervous, mm -hmm. um, especially because I have children. Yeah. Um, I, at first, I was like, you know, it's no big deal. It's all the way in China. It's all the way in, you know, New York, Italy, whatever. Um, which was very naive of me. Uh, it's only a matter of time before these things spread. So yeah. um, once it started to kind of creep its way over here is when I started to get a little bit nervous. And the more that I learned about uh, the virus and how it, mm -hmm. how it, uh, you know, yeah. spreads uh, and reaction yeah. people yeah. made me really nervous. So um, yes, there was a, a period of time where I was very anxious Mm -hmm. But in the end, for me, I kind of had to, you know, realize that there's only so much that we can do. There's only so much sanitizing and washing and avoiding that we can do mm -hmm. um, without going crazy as well. Yeah. So, you know, just finding the balance in between. Um, and it, it's, it's improved a lot. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot that I've had to surrender and let go and, you know, pray about and just leave it to God uh, who you know, who I trust in. So it, it really, it's, it's gotten better here. It's improved, but yeah. we're still being careful, you okay. know, wearing masks, washing yeah. hands, social distancing, six feet apart, right. things like that. So, yeah. Great. Good to know because, you know, everybody's going through the same thing and, you know, to we're all in this together. So yes, we are. Let's hope, you know, things get better and um, sooner. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Now let's go to the third part of this interview, which is the rapid fire. Um, yours will be a little bit different from the other rapid fires because we want to know a lot about Hawaii. And so uh, the first question I have is, can you teach us a phrase in the Hawaiian language other than aloha? Because we all know aloha. Sure, let's see, a phrase. There's many, but I'm trying to think of one that people will be able to use. Okay, so this one, it might be a little bit hard to remember. Okay. <laughs> but, um, and it's actually a literal translation from English. So as far as actual Hawaiian, I'm not sure how accurate it is, but people use it here. It's aole pilikia. And uh -oh. so that means, it means no problem. Okay. So if someone says, oh, I'm so sorry, and then you can say, aole pilikia, aole means no, okay. pilikia means problem. So, no problem. Can I try it? Aole pilikia? Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> okay. Really nice. I'll remember that. <laughs> and um, what is your favorite island activity? Oh my goodness, it's really hard to choose. My favorite activity, it's probably just gonna have to be going to the beach like most of my pictures are. Um, I grew up playing outside. Mm -hmm. I really love nature so much. I'm very connected to it. Um, a lot of my childhood memories are in nature. So it's gotta be just going to the beach. It's free, it's enjoyable. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's just good for your body and your, your mind. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just great. Right. So I usually ask the other Oz Mom guests, uh, if you could be stuck on an island with three people, then who would they be and what island? But I'm not asking you island question. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to rephrase that. I'm going to ask you uh, if you could live in any other country or city, which would that be? 
and why? Ooh, that is an interesting question. Let's see. So I've only been to, outside of the U.S., I've only been to Asia, certain parts of Asia. Okay. Um, I guess if it had to be somewhere that I've already been, <sighs> I would honestly probably pick Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I really love Washington. There is something just very special about it. It really is a very wonderful place. There's lots okay. to do. Um, mm -hmm. Again, people are so friendly. You know, it's very yeah. diverse and it's right. beautiful. Um, yeah. So I know that might be an odd answer, but I have to say Washington. I love Washington so much. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I love it too. Um, and what is your go-to mom hack? This is another question I ask all the other moms as well because I feel every mom has some small trick or something up her sleeve uh, which she can share, which other moms can use. Oh my goodness. Well, it's nothing, I guess it's nothing out of the ordinary. Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I know we all know that, but snacks. I mean, that always solves the problem. <laughs> Talk up on snacks, right? <laughs> right. Okay. And um, uh, if we uh, can learn one thing from the people of Hawaii, what, what would that be? If you want to share with uh. us. I think it would just be to start off with respecting people. There's a phrase that goes around where um, you have to earn respect. But the beautiful thing about people in Hawaii and the Aloha Spirit is we give you respect automatically. So in order for that to happen and in order for that to continue, mm -hmm. you do have to later prove yourself. <laughs> but you know, we do start off with arms open, with giving you love mm -hmm. and respect, welcoming you in. Um, I know everyone has seen the movie Lilo and Stitch, mm -hmm. and I really love it because it's it's a very good example. You know, you have aliens coming to this place, yeah. and yet Lilo and her family just welcome them in like no big deal, very easily. So yeah. it's very it's very much a good example of Hawaiian culture. We welcome everyone, and as long as you reciprocate the love and respect, mm -hmm. you'll you'll always have family here. Oh, that's so sweet. And it makes me want to travel and visit Hawaii. It was all on our list this year, but unfortunately, we need to wait longer, you know, now because of this pandemic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, when you do come, please let me know. If you come to the island of Oahu, I would love to see you guys. Oh, definitely. I would love that too. So we come to the end of our interview, Alexis. Thank you so much for talking to us and sharing so much about your family and about your journey. It was Thank wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun and I really love your videos so far and I look forward to seeing the rest. Thank you so much, Alexis. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, Viti. -bye. Bye,